Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Assam in India. Assam is located in western India. You can see that it borders Bangladesh way down here. I'm at a weird angle, I cannot see the map. I have to like lean over at a weird angle to see what I'm pointing at, so excuse me. It's at a, this, this state's in a really awkward angle and my hand looks weird. But it's a great map because it shows a lot of the details of the song. The most notable being, I gotta lean down to see at the beginning. The Brahmaputra River which flows right through the heart of the state of Brahmaputra uh, in my opinion, number two most important river in India after of course the Ganges the capital is Gujarat right there and as you can see there are many many towns and cities throughout the state mainly like around this area here because most of the rest of the region is very, very forested and quite mountainous. You can see it also borders Bhutan right here, one of the most mountainous countries in the world. And of course, those mountains being the Himalayas, the highest peaks in the world. There are so, so many national parks and reserves throughout Assam, but there are two that stand out. The first one being the Manas National Park, which sounds like it should be in Kyrgyzstan. Everything they have is named Manas. Uh, it flows into Bhutan. They have their own Manas Park in Bhutan, but they have the India section as well. The other being the more famous one, which is strange that I don't think it's labeled on my map and I gotta lean down again to find the spot. It's about here or so. And it is the Kaziranga National Park. You know what? I had a comment the other day saying you should describe where the things are. But it's the Kaziranga is along the shores of the Brahmaputra, like the southern half. If the if the Brahmaputra River splits the state in half, north and south, it's on the southern end. Manas being on the northern end near the border with Bhutan. And Bangladesh's border being to it southeast. It also borders Meghalaya State, West Bengal, Arunachal Pradesh, um, and many others. Nagaland, Manipur, etc. And many others which is kind of important to its history. We'll come back to that in a bit. But let's change the angle here so I can show you the UNESCO articles about these beautiful parks. Let me see if I can't. Let me turn this on and slide this over. You know, not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Kaziranga National Park. In the heart of Assam, this park is one of the last areas in eastern India undisturbed by a human presence. It is inhabited by the world's largest population of one-horned rhinoceroses, as well as many mammals, including tigers, elephants, panthers and bears, and thousands of birds. You can look at the gallery, and yeah, there are quite a few rhinos. When, um, go to Google Earth, you'll see more rhinos. And there's elephants. And of course, on my channel, when we have elephants, we have Topple, the ASMR elephant, with his amazing ASMR ears. But I'm actually going to save Topple for the very end of the video. Topple will close out the video for us while I'm looking at the tablet. So stay tuned for Topple. More rhinos down here. Here's a cool water buffalo in the midst. And lots of plants as well. The other park is the Manas Wildlife Sanctuary. 
on a gentle slope in the foothills of the Himalayas, where wooded hills give way to alluvial grasslands and tropical forests, the Manas Sanctuary is home to a great variety of wildlife, including many endangered species, such as the tiger, pygmy hog, Indian rhinoceros, and Indian elephant. There are quite a few tiger sanctuaries in Assam. The Bengal tiger is the national animal of India, and they're quite endangered. So recently, I want to say in the past 20, 30 years or so, the Indian government's been stepping up its preservation of the tigers. Still very, very low numbers, but definitely going up, slowly but surely. Hopefully the tigers will be okay. Look at this cute monkey. And what are these? They look like buffalo. But that is the two most famous parks in Assam. Let's see if I can't smoothly transition this back up to the map. You know, not bad. As you can see, I'm at a strange angle. And I, I cannot see my my camera's directly in front of my face. I cannot see the map. So, just doing my best. Let me move my tablet out the way so I can lean over. Okay. So, the history of the state is very, very interesting. Since it is India, and one of the more um, inhabited corners of the Indian subcontinent, talking about Bangladesh down here, the mouths of the Ganges down here, and of course the Brahmaputra River Valley. It's been inhabited for a long, long, long time. But the most famous ancient civilization would have been the Kamarupa Kingdom, which existed in the state from the 4th to the 12th centuries. And they are very famous for being mentioned in the Mahabharata, Mahabharata, sorry, the Ramayana, and an Ashoka pillar. Ashoka was a prince, royalty of some kind, who was a warlord in more central India over there, who converted to Buddhism after a very bloody, horrific battle. And he spread his message by building temples, and these big, tall pillars that had declarations written on them. And one pillar over in Allahabad, which is nowhere near here, mentions the Kamarupa kingdom. Which is pretty cool, I think. Obviously, it existed way longer before the 4th century, I think, if it's in the Ramayana. I think that's older than the 4th century, but... That's, that's what my sources say. I think that's when it was consolidated as one kingdom, was in the 4th century, but it would eventually collapse and be replaced in 1228 by the Ahom kingdom. The Ahom were a Thai people. In particular, they were Shan, which is a Thai ethnic group that primarily lives in Myanmar today, which is just over here, there's the Sikits over here, that's Myanmar. And it was established by King Sukapa. And the kingdom would rule the region along the Brahmaputra for about 600 years. Slowly but surely conquering, subjugating, or pushing out other smaller kingdoms. There was the Chutia kingdom which I believe was absorbed by the Ahom. And then there was also the Kachari and the Kuch, which were pushed out. And you can see um, Kuch Bahar is over here in West Bengal now. Because um, the, the Kuch kingdom used to be more over here in the valley. They got pushed out there. And I think the Kacharis got pushed farther south. If I remember my research, I could be the Ahom didn't really have too much resistance until the Mughal Empire rose over that direction in central India. Um, the Ahom being a 
Hindu kingdom and the moguls being Muslim. If you can hear my cat in the background, I'm sorry. Um, and they, the moguls, of course, were big conquerors, so they attempted to conquer this area and they failed. The Ahom defended their home, but they would not be able to defend it. Yes, we can't do it. He is playing with my CVS coupons. Okay, he is biting paper again. Um, okay. They would be conquered by the Burmese in 1817. The Burmese would also um, have sporadic conquering moments, eras in their history. And they came and conquered the Ahom Kingdom. But they would not be around for very long. They controlled the region from 1821 to 1825. That's not to say they did not leave their mark on Assam in horrific ways that we will not get into because this is an ASMR video and we want to keep it monetized, so we won't get into it. But the Burmese were in such a conquering mood that the British got involved because they're starting to encroach on British territory in India. And the first Anglo-Burmese war broke out and when it ended, they signed the Treaty of Yandabu in 1826 to divvy up who was going to get what. I believe the English won, so they got um, pretty much their pick and they wound up accumulating the area that is now Assam State it over, made it part of the British Raj. They made it part of Bengal, which is just kind of this whole region here, including what's now Bangladesh today. In the capital at the time was Shillong, which you can see here in Meghalaya. And it changed in a big way this region. In 1837, when the British introduced tea, and they realized that tea leaves thrived in this region, and a massive tea industry developed. The Assam Company was established in 1839, which was their tea manufacturing, and they were pumping out tea in this region, which is still today, of course, because those plants are still thriving. So creating delicious, yummy chai, right? Um, oil was discovered later in the state, and so an oil industry developed. Coal mining was a big thing, but one of the real money makers was the opium trade, which doesn't really benefit anyone. It, you know, ruins communities, ruins people's lives, and just makes rich people richer, you know? Not the best trade to have in your region. But of course the British were gone in 1948 when India gained its independence. And in 1950, Assam became a state. But it did not look like this. They slowly broke up the states into Meghalaya, West Bengal, parts of Arunachal Pradesh, throughout the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I think it was in the 60s, I want to say, the capital became um, Guwahati. Now, one of the big issues in the region during this time was the partition, which is a huge chapter in India's history, not just because it was part of their independence, but because their country was literally chopped up into two at that time. The Muslims and Hindus were clashing despite everything Gandhi was doing to try to keep peace between them, and they figured the best resolution would be to create two countries, India for the Hindus, Pakistan for the Muslims. And this area here that is now Bangladesh is primarily Muslim. So it became East Pakistan. So, 
part of the Great Migration of the Partition, the largest migration in human history, with Muslims heading to Pakistan, Hindus heading to India, also occurred in this region, as mostly, I believe, you know, many Muslims went south into what's now Bangladesh. Bangladesh would get its independence from Pakistan much later. But that's a whole different story. But not everyone left the region, and in fact, many Bengali peoples would enter the states up here, legally and illegally. Bangladesh has been going through some hard economic times, but it's time before, during, and after independence were especially hard due to uh, poor economy and natural disasters, just to name a few. So many people fled Bangladesh into the states in the region here, including Assam. And a big movement sparked up in the late 70s to the mid 80s. That's known today as the Assam Movement, which was a series of protests to get Bengali illegal immigrants out of the state. And in 1985, the Assam Accord was signed to um, deport Bengali immigrants, illegal immigrants, on a mass scale. And from what I understand today, correct me if I'm wrong, Indian or Bengali viewers, that um, in Assam particularly, you have to carry identification with you if you're Bengali stating that you are legal. And I've read that there's issues of police, you know, harassing people to see their papers. And, you know, if you don't have them on you, you're out of the country, right? It's a big deal. So that is still ongoing. There's still quite a lot of racial tension. And, I don't know, it's just very interesting to me that, you know, 80, 70 years ago, Gandhi was pleading, pleading, pleading for this to not happen. The most revered person in India, he won all their currency. We'll look at some statues of him in Guwahati. And peace still cannot happen here, as much as he's tried. Um, I, I wholeheartedly believe world peace is a thing, but it involves people opening up their hearts a lot more than they think they need to. But that is the history of Assam state in a nutshell. Many other things have occurred in Assam, but um, those are the most important in my opinion. So why don't we head over to Google Earth and we will look at this beautiful, beautiful corner of India. So here we are in Assam state. For whatever reason, Google Earth doesn't want to show you the borders, but it's interesting because you can kind of see it in the environment, right? You can see the border here with Bhutan in the mountains, all the way down here following the rivers, and you can see the Brahmaputra standing out amid these lush green fields here between the mountains. Let's zoom out first so you can see exactly where we are. So here is India. We're in this corner over here. If you ever wondered why India has such a weird chunky shape around Bangladesh, which none of it's loaded. Bangladesh, where'd you go? It's not loaded. Um, it is because of the partition of India trying to carve out the majority Muslim regions. Right? Let's start off by working. Hopefully things, there we go, start to load. We're going to start off by looking at, goodness, there we go. I just got to get really, really close. You can see all this beautiful landscape here. Let's start with national parks, I guess. Orang popped up first. This is a tiger reserve, as you can see by the sign there. We're on Tiger Reserve, Assam. I don't think there's any pictures of tigers, but we do have wonderful rhinos. Those one-horned rhinoceroses. A very old temple here. 
sweet little deer. It's so cute. And there's our beautiful, wonderful elephants. If you don't know, elephants are my favorite animal. Elephants are very near and dear to my heart. Little map here. One horned rhinoceros. Is. Rhinoceros unicorn is perfect thing. One horned rhinoceros. Oh, a cute little statue there. a little friend and all of the beautiful places you can stay and you can ride on the elephants over here we can see Kaziranga's popped up but you can also go on safari to see the wonderful little rhinos sorry if you can hear my neighbor stomping above my head taking an elephant ride I've done that many times more beautiful rhinos out in the wild. Very sweet. Oh, isn't those the cutest little deer? My goodness, they look like cartoon deer. They're so cute. I'm just happy rhinos out in the wild. Happy elephants out in the wild. Just living their best lives. My cat's trying to climb into my lap. That is the thing that's happening. Little torts. Enjoying the sun. Dear. Yeah. From what I can tell, Kaziranga is just one of those very beautiful, beloved corners of India. Kaziranga in particular. Let's see. My goodness, nothing is popping up. Look at this, completely barren. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. This always happens to me when I'm recording. Just Google Earth just decides to not do anything. Like I can't even tell if I'm heading into Patam. I guess you can because you can see the mountains. Here is Manas National Park. I'm glad at least the park's popping up. And you can see here P Project Tiger, which is of course the Indian government's plan to preserve the tiger. That's a very skinny rhino. I hope they're okay. You should not be able to see the beautiful peacock, the national bird of India. And what else do we have here? I know I have some Kyrgyz viewers. Are any of you excited? <laughs> but <laughs> beautiful temple here. It says down here it's in Bhutan, actually. It just makes sense. The sea monkey looks very wise. The beautiful waters here. I can imagine that those are clear as can be. I wonder if this is an entry into Bhutan. It looks like a big gateway into something, doesn't it? Oh goodness. Looks like an elephant skull. Oh. Wow. I've never seen one that looks like that before. Alright. So there are many things to see, believe it or not, even though none of them are appearing here. There are many, many things to see in this state. And lots of other sanctuaries you can see other pictures of. Um, I'd highly encourage you to check them out yourself and to play around. But we're going to finish in Guwahati, which is not loading. I had to type it in because absolutely nothing was popping up for the largest city. I'm looking over here like, where did it go? It's over here. Guwahati. This is the capital. And we are going to head, first of all, I was looking around. Look how big this cricket stadium is. Absolutely massive. But it is India, so what do you expect? Um, as you can see, it's quite hilly gonna head up to the river to see the Assam State Museum and look at some cool artifacts. Here we go. Very cool old Hindu artifacts. It's a picture of Mahendradara, which is not even in India. It's in Pakistan now. Beautiful old Buddhas and some old weapons from past times. This is a very sassy looking lion. Some more ancient weapons that look like bombs. 
gorgeous, right? This is me playing with my cat. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Stop fighting. Beautiful little statuettes here. Kind of reminds me of what they found in Menjadar. The little tiny statues. Very cool Buddha, which looks ancient, but it says down here. Let me see. I gotta bring it closer. It says it's from... Wait, hold on. Approximately 800 CE. Sorry about that. Very tiny writing. Look. My goodness, isn't that incredible? Very old looking bomb there. Some cool sabers. And what do you think this is? It kind of looks like a helmet of some kind. I'm not sure. And that's also very beautiful. Isn't that Shiva? I want to say. I think so. Not too positive on my Hindu gods. There's also the Brahmaputra River Heritage Center, which has some pretty cool artifacts as well little outdoor space, play some chess, which was invented in India. At least the chess as we know it today. This building, I think, is neat because it looks like a little snapshot of the British Raj, kind of, like, preserved. It's giving those kind of safari adventure vibes from, like, the 1800s, early 1900s that the British romanticized, like, Richard Kipling kind of stuff, right? It reminds me of that. Like this. I don't know, it has that vibe to it. There's an old loom. Neat statues in there as well. Wow, well, little statue park. Some old, old cameras. I wonder what those have seen in their time. Before I show you something really cool over there, I want to show you um, this temple. Kamakia Temple. This is my neighbor. Oh, I didn't see this slideshow. I'm sure there's a bunch. It's of this lady. Okay. We don't want to see the lady, even though she's very beautiful. We want to see the temple. the right slideshow. Very, very large temple complex, Hindu temple complex up here. What's this scene? Oh my goodness, how beautiful. I've read that, like, if you're going to visit a Hindu temple in Guwahati, this is the one to visit. Look at the old trees growing up forever. Let me try to find the slideshow that I saw, because it's really cool. Um, it would have been, I guess, this one. Yeah. You can actually see the temple. You know, all the stuff inside is really cool. The big stupa here. Lots of beautiful domes. Outdoor worship prayer site beautiful bells, and look at these old, old, old statues here. It kind of reminds me of Angkor Wat. Obviously, you can't compare it to Angkor Wat, but it has Angkor Wat vibes, right? Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? These old stone carvings in the walls. Absolutely gorgeous. Another little stoop in there. All lit up, all pretty. Maybe for holy. Incredible carving quality heads on the arms of these gods. And all, can you see all the details in between? So gorgeous. Rainy day, of course, we're already in India. Get those monsoon rains. The nice view over there. But one little temple I found in here. It's really, really cool. It's way back here. On this island. And there's a little cable car. Can you see it there? That'll take you there. But there's also boats, which is what I would do, because I'd probably have an anxiety attack. <laughs> I'm so happy. 
look at this tiny little temple and this tiny little island with a beautiful archway there which I thought this was cute it's very beautiful until I read how cute is that this sign and I kind of lean close to see it because I'm too far away it says let me see Umananda Devaldi is a Shiva temple located at the Peacock Island in the middle of the river Brahmaputra. It was built by the Ahom King Gandanhar Singha, who was a devout Shivaite. It is known as the smallest inhabited riverine island in the world. How cool is that? Country boats available on the bank of the Brahmaputra take the visitors to the island. The mountain on which the temple has been built is known as Basmakala. How neat is that though? This is the smallest inhabited riverine island in the world. Crazy if true, right? That's I assume this is what's inside the stupa here. Little figure of Shiva all adorned with little things. Prayers. There just goes the river boat. Incredible, right? What a neat little place. Let's see if I can't find... It's on top of a hill. Here it is. A little tribute to Bapu. Indian flag here. Beautiful view of the city. How gorgeous is that? You never think you'd see so much green in an Indian city. And there he goes, walking to the shore to get the salt. Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation. This I wanted to show you. I think this is the most beautiful statue of Gandhi I've ever seen. A peaceful, meditative, Buddha-esque, right? It's very serene. Gorgeous statue there of Gandhi. And a beautiful little hilltop complex here. Absolutely gorgeous. I think those are all the things I wanted to show you. Look how massive this river is. It is such a powerhouse flowing down from the Himalayas. I think we're going to close this out with some topple. So here's topple the elephant. If you're new to my channel, this is topple the ASMR elephant. I'm going to put him up to the mic and rub his ears while I give you a good night message to move my pop screen so you can really hear them. Here we go. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series on my channel. And next we are heading over to Kazakhstan. Sure to sit.